Um, I recently had an interesting online conversation with somebody about this book. I always give this book to anyone who's new, who, who's new to Agile. Um, it just, it's just a nice, simple book, lists the practices, talks about why source control is a good idea, for example, which might be alien to someone who's fresh out of college. It's a useful book. And one of the things they do in this book is they talk about a practice, they talk about how you do it, and then they, they say how it feels when you do that practice. And to me, um, that's the expert bit. Now, it was on um, Stack Overflow as the, in, in the top 100 books of, that every programmer should read. I think it's about fourth or fifth. But this guy, Joe Forker, said, you know, to me, this how does it feel is right. It's just, it makes no sense. It's like an inspirational speaker talking. And I had a little bit of to and fro with him because I was like, no, no, the feeling thing is important. It's, it's, it's the intuition, it's your expertise, it's the fact you've done this for 10, 15 years that's talking. Um, and it's the old left brain, left brain, right brain thing. You, you, the, the pattern recognition part of your brain, which isn't actually the one that speaks, can see, it, it remembers the pain. <laughs> and, but he, what Joe wanted was a list of contracts free rules he could just apply. And that's cool, Joe, but that isn't actually what that book was about. That book is about the feeling, and it's about the feeling of, 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 behavi of, the, of behaving correctly. Okay, I'm going to switch tack now. Um, the other thing about being expert is actually understanding whatever framework you use and understanding it really, really well. Um, I'm a Rails dev, and a complete beginner with the Rails book can build um, a database-backed app in pff, a couple of days. Seriously, it's brilliant. But it will be full of security holes and all sorts of things. Um, uh, I'm going to give a quick example here, a bit of code on the screen. So those of you who aren't coders, sorry. Um, I'm, I'm sure I hope you had enough coffee to keep yourselves awake. Um, this is a, a method in a controller class. Um, basically, it's saying, find me the resort offer that fits with the ID I've been passed. Now, you wouldn't know this, but it has a gaping security hole in it. Uh, it's not obvious, because the resort offer actually belongs to somebody. And I could do that old hacker trick of just keep changing the ID on the end and see everyone else's offers. So the quick fix, because the user has to be logged in to see these offers, is to just whack in current user doc. And that's great, but you've got index, create, retrieve, update, Delete. You've got five methods, so you have to do that in five methods. And also, uh, does anyone know what Demeter is about the law of Demeter, where you don't have train wrecks? You've got this horrible train wreck now with all these dots and nasty dependencies and ugh. Now this might not look like it, but I think this is the optimum solution. You leave that code the way it is, and essentially uh, Ruby has the concept of um, yielding blocks. And you sell the controller when you run any method wrap it in this. And what that does is actually put a little bit of context in so that it would always, whenever anyone references that object that asks for the end result offer, it, it forces it to always care about the user ID. So we go back to that, but we protect ourselves. And it means if any naive, uh, less experienced person comes in and adds a new method and just goes in result offer dot blah, 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 it's safe code. And that's what I'm talking about, understanding the framework, understanding it properly, and understanding why the guys who uh, came up with Rails came up with things like the around filter. And, and this, is the, this is one of the problems I have when I'm pairing with people. Um, they don't understand things like this. And I have to be very gentle and very careful, but also say, look, this is part of becoming the expert at this. This is part of, of it's like becoming a journeyman, is, is, to, is to know this stuff. We did actually have a slightly high volume discussion about this because the other guys were going, but the, the code where it says current user dot is easier to understand. Yes, but it's also error prone. That's just me. Um, I can be a bit stubborn about these things. So in, th in that case, less is more, even though it looked like more code, when you multiply it by the five or six methods that you get by default plus any others you added, suddenly less is less and you're, you're protecting yourself. So 
um, this is another thing about the coding thing. If you, if you work with a framework, ooh, falling over my back there, um, you need to get to expert. And that involves reading the books, keeping up to date, working through tutorials, pairing with people who know more than you do, pairing with people who know less than you do but are going to ask that naive question and you go, oh, God, which happens to me all the time. Um, okay, the other thing about Yagni is we love to do, we love to polish stuff, don't we? And if you're faced with a problem that's too difficult or you're a bit afraid of, you find some kind of diversionary activity to do, don't you? I do. You know, whether it's reading Stack Overflow or researching a, an API or something. Um, this is actually a, <laughs> uh, the Ren and Stimpy cartoon people, they, they, they have these bogus international day of. Um, and this is <laughs> an action figure from the International Day of Yak Shaving, or inter sorry, International Yak Shaving Day. So um, uh, there's other action figures you can get where he's already got the stuff on his chin and things. Now, and just in case you don't know what yak shaving is, and I suspect a lot of people don't, because I only came across the term recently myself, I'm not expecting you to read all that, but essentially he wants to tidy his room, and then he has to do all these things, like get bags, yada, 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 and then he used to find his keys, which are in the untidy room, and he can't find it, which is why he wanted to tidy the room in the first place. And do you find this, whenever you are under stress, whenever you're faced with a difficult problem, um, do you find that you start doing diversionary activity and you start, and again, what's, how do you stop yourself doing this? How do we organizationally stop ourselves doing this? Um, yeah, a hairy yak is a happy yak. <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> right, I put pairing into Google Images and it came up with inappropriate pairing, um, possibly mildly racist pairing as well. But essentially, how do we as developers, as just simple human beings, how do we stop ourselves running off down paths that are foolish after we've realized it? How do we do that? We do it by pairing. We do it by talking to each other. And we do it by being really honest with each other. Uh, and it's quite frightening it, it's visceral again it's 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 opening your heart up and and being really kind of putting yourself on the line uh, and for me a lot of agility is about this business of, of just being really honest about what you think what you feel um not in a kind of prima donna way um but definitely being you know uh, and also being prepared to take responsibility so if you see something that's broken you fix it for example which is a row i'm currently having it on the beach but let's not go there um I'm just going to briefly talk about flexibility. And we said, you know, is flexibility the enemy of Yagni? Now, those of us that built systems back in the 80s, 90s, noughties, um, how many people here have built a, a very, very highly configurable system with a database at the back end where you can set an option that says black is white on Tuesdays? Yeah, except when there's an R in the month and um, th there's a left-handed transvestite singing the blues. I, and, and we end up with these intensely configurable systems that are all data-driven, pr properties-driven. And we thought that was flexibility, didn't we? But what we were doing, in fact, was dodging the question about what our software should actually do. And we were trying to accommodate everybody. And anyone who's ever worked on a J2E, in a J2E environment where you have XML config files coming out your... <clears throat> well... It's about this flexibility thing. And of course, the providers of these systems, the IBM, Oracle, all the usual suspects, they want everybody to buy their product. So they, they make it so that they, anyone who wants to do anything can, 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 can use their product. But it never quite fits your needs, does it? So what is flexibility? Um, I found this guy's book online, for, uh, and it was free. And it's actually a cracking book, uh, particularly for a Microsoft C Sharp person, because uh, his examples are C Sharp, and he actually talks a lot about the Microsoft environment. And it was nice to read a, a book um, which gives examples that aren't from the open source community. It was actually quite pleasant, you know, just, just, you know. But what's he talking about here? He's saying, I'm writing a system, I'm writing stuff, and I need it to just be simple, yeah? I need it to, so that I can go back to it, or some other poor soul can go back to it, and actually understand what it does and I can change it. And he doesn't say this, but of course, we're all um, into test-driven development, aren't we? 
If you're not, I'll slap you. Um, the, the other thing as well is with this, um, it's testable if it's simple. Yeah? And the problem with those old style systems where we had all those huge databases was they were impossible to certify because you had so many companies. And they were impossible to, to, to deliver. I, I worked for um, uh, a company in Warrington who do assets, which, you know, like roads and stuff, not, not tables. And every single customer had a different config. And when we were check chasing bugs, they always had to send us a copy of their database because we couldn't. And we had 200 customers. It was bonkers. Whereas if you write the software, if instead you, you write it, you, you control the complexity of the software, the difference is flexibility isn't configuration. I'm going to do this hand movement because I was doing it when I was practicing this talk. Flexibility is the ability to flex. It's the ability to change things easily. And, and that is definitely a you ain't going to need it kind of uh, principle, isn't it? So flexibility isn't the ability to configure things. It's the ability to see a new need, a new problem, and flex, change the code without it hurting too much, which is, means you need a full test suite. Uh, and it also means you, you, know, you need um, to be very conscious of, of what you're doing and why you're doing it. And then there's a longer, more interesting conversation I had with a friend the other day about how now we understand how to write software and how to so control software repositories. Maybe we should, net, we should just dispense with this idea of configuring things and just have different forks for different purposes. But that's a di completely different conversation. <laughs> and uh, again, we're back to complifying things. I think doing the configuration up front is, is about complifying. It's about trying to cater for everybody. So you've got the ninja route through the middle and the not ninja route around the outside. And you've got the yellow bus going. <laughs> um, and again, the, the, the way of getting past this is, 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 to, is to always keep taking that step back from what you're doing, talk to the person you're pairing with, talk to the team, demo it to somebody, be really open about what you're doing. Okay, uh, very, we're getting close to the end now. The best code, what's the best code I ever wrote? I, I, can tell you, I can tell you straight away what the best code I ever wrote is. It's the code I never wrote. I didn't have to test it. I didn't have to justify it to a business owner. Um, I didn't have to um, do anything with it other than realize I didn't need to write it. It's great. It's perfect. It's bug free. RM star dot star. The, the code you've now left with is bug free. It's great. The other thing is um, when you're reviewing code, um, when the, if you remember the three, the mantra for test driven development is write the test, write the response, and then the bit nobody does which is remove duplication. So when you remove duplication, you're deleting stuff. You're getting rid of it. You're saying, I don't need this crap. It's rubbish. Well, you know, it doesn't meet my needs. Let's be more, let's be kinder to it. So I'm also saying as well as Yagni, after you've built your system, after your system's moving forward, you need to start thinking about Yag key, which is a fishism. I, just, I actually came up with it the other day, which is you ain't going to keep it. Get rid of it. Get one of these and use it. If the code can't justify its existence, ax it. Get rid of it. It's not needed. Um, and this is the best key on the keyboard because it's the one that solves all problems. Perhaps I'm being a little bit. Um, question time is soon. Um, I'm near the end of the presentation. I just thought I'd forewarn you so you can start switching from left to right brain. <laughs>